Sexy People Podcast is Dan Frigolat. Part two of the Lexi Luna episode begins in just a second here. I wanted to wanna once again remind everybody that uh, we've been flagged on YouTube for including links to our guests' work. Um, it's a new flag, and it's put us in peril. We might lose that page. So please go to Dan Frigolette and subscribe there, and we'll continue to put the episodes there and give you all the content that you need and want. Uh, we're also available, of course, everywhere podcasts are for the audio version of this podcast. Thank you for listening and watching. And then, yeah, and then, the, and then whatever demon that you have that you're hiding from doesn't have to grow it can just it can you know, shine the light on it, it can just yeah it can just like it's like a gremlin as long as you don't feed it after midnight yeah cute. well because I, I think part of the reason why i said this podcast was i had trouble um in my own life like like reconciling the slutty parts of me and whether or not mm-hmm. it was like okay mm-hmm. you know for sure um, and for guys totally different stigma being slutty than for girls yeah but yes and no because that's only speaking to being slutty with guys so it's like it's positive to be slutty with guys but if you're slutty and you're a guy and you want to date girls and they think that you're slutty that also right. and in fact it negatively hurts your thing um you know like being be like oh he's like i was somebody who even even like came out of college and like i've been with two girls and like but i gave off a, a persona for whatever reason that like, you were like if i say something genuine that i that i'm using that line everywhere mm-hmm. and it's like no i'm this is this is i don't even this is one. I don't even know I'm hot yet. I'm 20. I have no idea yeah. that I'm hot. I have no idea, like, and not that I'm the hottest person, but, like, I didn't have any confidence that, like, I could achieve, like, that you're an attractive a male normal... who could find an attractive right. female. Yeah. Right. And the not... most normal acceptance right. of relationships. Right. Yeah. Right. I feel, yeah. Right. I didn't know it was pretty for a long time, yeah. and in college, I, like, started wearing makeup in college. Yeah. Like, that's the level of didn't know. Yeah. Right. So, and, you know, I was in a small town and all that kind of thing, but in college I started like, sexually exploring myself. Yeah. And with what was partners, your, oh shit, what was your, like, holy shit, I'm hot? Um, I think it was the night that I took three guys home from the bar, but at different times. Yeah. And three, like, same night. So you, got some, you got some ass, you went back. And I back. was like, oh my God. You got some ass, went back. I could literally just point to any of you in your mind. Yeah. And it was like, it was almost like magical pussy syndrome, but not yeah. really because I felt like it. I felt like it was all facial beauty that they were interested in. Yeah. It wasn't like they wanted to, like, fuck me and didn't matter who, what kind, how I looked. Yeah. Because I, I, I don't know, I think it was just from not having any experience in picking up guys. Like, yeah. Like, I was in my early 20s, like, early baby 20s. And even still, I'm, I'll am i be in I'll be in an interaction with a woman where they're not, they feel like they're not supposed to be forceful. I was just like, wait for me to do a thing. Mm, yes. And it's like, and we're still, we're still, we're it's still. It's like you can that. take what you want. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, either me. either gender. I'm ready. Just come get yeah. Yeah, like, and, no. and sometimes I feel like as a female, like it's almost hotter if you are like, I know what I want, and I want you to kiss me, and I, yeah. and I'm gonna make that move on you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and it and it kind of takes away from I'm assuming from the man's perspective that. That like, oh, does she want it? Does she not want right. it? Like, am I being, am I coming on too strong? Right. Is this too much? Like, is she, is this a little? I'm horny. This is my girlfriend. Can I even ask her? Or is that like a toxic male shit? For sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, you guys deal with as much as we do. Yeah. And it's, the thing about chemistry is so interesting because we both feel it, but nobody wants to act on it. Yeah. It's strange. Yeah. It's like, is it like. Is it wrong to be like, oh, oh, like oh, I need my dick suck before I leave the house? You know, like, it's yeah. like, you know, it's like, and, can I request and, this? Is this right. something I can and do? You, and 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 you know, and luckily I found um, sexual dynamics where we can just go. It's just like, you know, I need to get my pussy in before I go to mm-hmm. like the bar. Great, let's go. Yeah. yeah. How much time do you have? Great, eight minutes. Little, let's go. Little pre dinner. Yeah. Sit on my face. Let's go. Yeah. Um, and and I want that for people yeah. more than anything else. Yeah. Um, I want people to understand that it's okay to be that. It doesn't. Not every sexual experience has to be sex. It doesn't have to be penetration. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like this hours long thing. You can just get off real quick, go to dinner, and come back and do other shit. Yeah. Like that's totally fine. And sex does f- not have to be penetration yeah. and always just like forever long. Yeah. Like that's romantic feeling. It doesn't have to be all that. You can just get your rocks off and go to dinner. And 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 finding. I guess this is the thing I want to say, but I don't know how to say. Um, I don't want to say it like this, but I'm going to say it like this. I think people are fucking the wrong people to a certain extent. So, like, what happens is um, when you find, like, like a person where the chemistry is really good, like, you can get each other off fast, like you're saying. Right. 
and then you just like you know um and that's kind of who you're supposed to be fucking i will say after a like after a little while you can get each other off fast because at the beginning it's yeah. like uh does she like this is she yeah, not like this is yeah. she making is she putting on a show to make you feel like she likes right, this right. you know all those things are really big factors yeah, but you're playing you're playing like chicken with their body <laughs> yeah you know, and so that's never just, fun just yeah. communicate with your partner it's so much fun. easier if you just tell them what you want and then they yeah. do it <laughs> yeah and then go well and then because then it did create this dynamic where uh women are waiting for you to do something and then guys are and then guys become this forceful thing which then goes the wrong way because mm-hmm. they're like oh um she pulled my thumb out of her butt, but she wants it, so I'm going to do it three more times. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that thing, that non-communication thing, mm-hmm. this dance that we've been doing for hundreds of years has, has years. made some problems. Yeah, I agree. Um, but yeah, just tell them. I think a lot of things can be solved in the world with just communication. Just Open tell and honest that communication. Means that we're doing a thing. Um, I'm at a writer's workshop for comedians, and I'm, I'm there as one of the veteran people or whatever, and there's a younger comic, and they're like, and they do a bit, and it's funny, but they don't really know why it's funny. And I like sum up the thing, and I go, is this, the, what, "What it seems like you're saying is this bit is about blah 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 blah." And he goes, "Yeah." And I go, "So just say that." Yeah. And it was like, "Oh, I didn't know you could just say yeah, the just thing say, that you mean." Say the thing. Yeah, you know. I think that also comes with age. You know, you get more open, and you're you're more you're, you're Maybe. you don't give a shit more of, as to how it might be perceived. Because I, for a long time in my early twenties was very worried about the way I'd be perceived if I said something that was slutty, if I said something yeah. that was off topic, if I said something that was taboo, if I was into something yeah. that was sexy. Sure. I'm there I mean I'm still there sometimes. And and I don't know if it is age. I don't I don't like to blame age. No, I think our experiences and our age as we get older I, we get more confident. I blame the year though. I'll be like, okay it's, we can say that cuz it's twenty twenty two, but you might be right. You may be right that you've been around long enough to know personally that you have the confidence, but mm-hmm. in my head I'm always like, no, the world has changed, and now you can say it. But I think you're right. I think the world only changes as we get older. Yeah. Because the world is the same for I our parents. Yeah. Right? They still have that same mindset. Yeah. They've not changed. We only change as we get older. But that's the problem. And it's like, so yeah, I'll say the, the thing to my parents, and then they, they can't handle dealing with this thing. I'm therapy. I'm trying to deal direct communication with my parents. And they're like, what is this direct communication you're doing? I thought I had the good, no, you're full of shit. That's the first move. First, yeah. And that's where I end up. That's why I'm... And then you're like, fuck, my therapist didn't help me with this. Right. Come back. Right. Well, I was telling you, it's like I'm in that sweet spot where I know that I'm wrong, um, and I can't fix it. Yeah. So hopefully I'll get to the part where I can't fix it. You know, we're all just a work in progress, and give yourself a little bit of grace. I think that's important, and that's what you said about the relationships. Relationships are a progress, and, and maybe they change over time. And maybe certain things move, and so we have to be open to that stuff. Yeah. Because I think we get stuck in, well, he used to do this, or she used to do that, and now it's different. And maybe that's fine. And different is fine, and if it's different to the point where you still love each other in the core, but maybe, like, maybe you're not doing the um, same amount of activities that you were before and, and you really like to go play play pinball or arcade games and they're just not really into that anymore. Yeah. And then maybe you can find somebody who really does like to do that but you like them more than a friend. So then you, you know, then you're building this relationship. I mean, anybody we talk to in our lives we're building relationships with regardless of romantic or not. Yeah. So, you know, like it's okay to have relationships that are romantic and aren't romantic as well, long as you're lady, communicating. Be more cream cheese. Um, <laughs> so, I guess, so... I'm still trying to figure out how to how to how to verbalize it. This is the thing we're having trouble with. I think society is like, how do we explain to somebody um, that there are multiple forms of love? How do we explain to somebody that there are that there are reasons to like that? There's no reason they need to be jealous because I really can't. I'm just trying to understand how to how to break down jealousy. That like, what's the what's the what's the concern of jealousy? Here's it's the like thing about jealousy. For me, it was always like and you said you've formally I'm, been jealous. I have formally been jealous. It's and because I aware. wasn't getting my needs met. But I couldn't verbalize what my needs were because I didn't know what they were. So you were low-key inside, kind of pissed. That I wasn't getting the amount of attention that I thought I should be getting. And therefore... But I I didn't know that it was the attention that was the problem. I thought it was some other factor that was like, oh, she's prettier than me. Or, oh, she's, you know, older than me. Or whatever it might be. She's a spinner and I'm not. So was the the jealousy a projection? I think so. I think absolutely. And once I realized that what I really needed was for the person to give me that phone call at the time they agreed to do it. Yeah. Or for that person to, um, you know, set aside time for me. And that once I got that fill, the jealousy ended. But I didn't know how to communicate that until I knew how to communicate that. 
Yeah. Well, and so I'm stuck. So we talk about poly, and it makes me feel good. And then, uh, but then, you know, but I'm stuck in a world that, that wants me to be monogamous. monogamous. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm stuck in a world where, you know, I'm in therapy with a person who um, believes that there should be one person for that should meet all your needs. So then I'm stuck again. So it's like, mm -hmm. so how many needs as a, as a person who's poly should I want to have fulfilled? You deserve to have all your needs fulfilled. And how many, and how do I know, like, how do I, so this is the part that, that this is my brain. So you're like, okay, so I'm going to take on people to fill, fulfill all my needs. How little of a need does somebody have to fulfill to be part of my poly right, blog? Right, right, right. How do I know? That's the tricky part. Well, how do you know? How do you know? You feel it. You talk about it. And I, yeah. I know I keep saying communication and communication and communication, but it really is the only tool we have yeah. to grow. I mean, the reason that when you go to a therapist you feel better is because you've talked about it. Right. And it really is. As long as you can commit to listening to all the communication and not judging it, yeah. then you'll, you'll make progress. But if, if you start to hear somebody communicate with you and they're... Because you got to think, the person who's communicating is putting themselves on the line. They're very vulnerable. Very yeah. vulnerable. And if you dismiss that, they'll never want to do it again. Right. So being open to hearing it and, say, and synthesizing, understanding, taking it in, and not immediately re reacting, especially if you have a negative reaction. Not saying, well, you shouldn't be because of this. Yeah, we get very That's defensive. That's not helpful. Defensive, right? yeah. And we, and we invalidate what someone's saying. Exactly. And their feelings are valid. Like, that's yeah. what they're feeling. It's, you know, they can't help it. And being open to accepting that and working forward and moving forward towards a, a resolution, whatever. And sometimes the resolution is we can't be together. And that's okay. Yeah, my uh, Eric, who produces uh, on this podcast, one of the thing he always I call him as like my coach, mm -hmm. mediation for like whatever, and he's like, okay, well, once, and he knows what I do wrong, and he's like, he's like, when somebody says something to you, uh, believe them. Yeah. When somebody tells you how they feel, believe them, because I'm always looking to poke holes in them. Yeah. Like, well, you can't feel that way because, because I've, been, I've done these things. Right. Yeah. So it's you, not about you. Right. Believe them. Yeah. Um, and that's. It's that a hard can, thing. It is a hard thing, and especially when that's not the training you've had your whole life. But you for know, changing reason, your your viewpoints is a is a big work. Right. Well, and, and the big one for me at one point was I I did something that was very innocuous and it offended somebody who I was dating and it really hurt their feelings and eventually I realized oh well the only reason to apologize, um, the only thing that matters is that I don't want to have hurt your feelings. Mm. So my intent and what I did isn't relevant, and. Um, and like whether or not I do it again, or how I felt when I was doing it is irrelevant. It hurt you. So and now, I apologize for that, for making you feel that. I want to make you whole again. Yeah. And it's not going to take a piece of me away to make you whole. So I'm going to do that. that I'm going to take that a step. A lot of progress to get to that statement you just made. And it's hard, but it's hard. And, but like, oh. look at the growth, like from five years ago yeah. to now. Like I see you growing. Who was like, I five years doing ago? It. You were this like lost little comedian who wanted to talk to porn stars and prove to everybody else that like they have feelings too but at the same time you were kind of figuring that out on your own you know what's funny i wanted also wanted to prove that i could do uh, a, a round of porn star interviews and then not fuck them which because this is what this is what comedians come with they, and they go oh should you fuck all your guests like why would you start this show and like that's the dumb dude toxic yeah. thought yeah. and so i was like like i was like i fuck no one <laughs> Um, yeah. And yeah, so I guess I lost little comedian man. You did. I'll accept that. That's okay. I'll accept that. Who thought I could literally, like, take Alexis Fox's one million followers by doing one episode with her? That's what I thought okay. in my head. <laughs> Wait, so did we do your long, long-term goal? Um, I don't think we even did the medium goal. Oh, no, the medium goal was to connect with my fans more via yeah. TikTok and social media. TikTok. Um, long, long-term goal, I, like I said, I think I really want to help models, the new models, because I, it's a formula. Like, the way that you look on camera, everybody's body, the way that you move it, does not look good on yeah. camera. You have to do it a little bit differently. You have to know your angles. And that's yeah. really what it comes down to. So I think my, my real passion is connecting with new models and helping them feel a part of this industry and helping them stand on their own two feet and not feel like they have to do something they don't want to do. Yeah. So that's really my true passion is like helping helping new models not get taken advantage of. I like that. So, you know, whatever capacity that ends up being. In what the do you future, want to call it? Model consultant? Mm -hmm. Does it exist? I don't think it does. All right. 
Now, you know, I feel like a lot of girls, veteran girls in the industry are like, my DMs are open, but that's so, that's such a big step for a new model to contact somebody with half a million followers and be like, hi, I'm brand new, any advice? What do I do? You know, so I think having somebody that's kind of prepackaged and brought to you on set right. is more the, the, the goal. Yeah, a friend of mine is like a, uh, he's like an actor consultant and, mm -hmm. and he's just there for... It started like just like young kids like don't really know what to do for their thing and they just want to need them on set in case yeah and they just and they work the scenes um, so I think we I think we all need that yeah um, everybody can use a friend in their corner who's not looking to get any any gain out of them. right right all right uh, you want to do a random lightning round I'll just ask you random stuff you have to pick sure uh, cats or dogs dogs uh, lights on lights off for sex it's up to your interpretation. <laughs> For sex on, uh, generally off. I like to just open the windows and get whatever natural light's there. I feel like our rhythms are so determined by technology these yeah. days that yeah. sometimes like screens on all the time feels like it's earlier later than it is, and I think it fucks us up. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I'll, well, all the fake light is fucking it's fucking up birds. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, light pollution. Okay. What's uh, best uh, best documentary out of no uh, Joe or um, uh, what's the name of the lady in Tampa? Uh, uh, Carol. Joe or Carol Baskin? Joe Exotic or Carol Baskin? Did you not see the Tiger, Tiger King? No. Do you, okay, so skip that one. Um, lions or Tigers? I think Lions. Um, what's the perfect size bet? King. I don't care who you are. Single, married, single, occasionally, King. King, if you're an adult, do not have a full bed. If you're an adult woman, you may have a queen. Men, you must have a fucking king bed. Sorry, I just got very passionate about so that. <laughs> have, you been, have you been in a California king? I don't think so. I I feel like people like promote their bed as California king, and I'm like, I just, this doesn't feel any different. Is it supposed yeah, it's to be like longer? Every, every guy's six foot. Yeah. Is it supposed to be longer? I don't know what it is, honestly. I really I don't, don't know. I think I do either. Yeah, I don't know what the so difference between California, California king. Bullshit. I just know Shaq, I just know Shaq has a large bed because he's too tall. Um... I imagine he would have like a round bed and it would have like think, a satin red sheet. I think sheet. he does. does. I think he? that's literally what it is. I don't know why you'd want a round bed. Have you ever, have you ever been on a round bed? No. I don't know why that's good. Um, I think you can. I think squares. Like, think, think about how you can fit shape. people. Like, you can fit so many more people on a and that's round when it's thing. Been used. Yeah, in like movies where it's like an orgy, yeah. orgy bed. Right. But I think it's best it's when they geometry. have like a You're just square. You're thinking about geometry. I am. <laughs> but that's only if everybody lines up like a pizza slice. But then when they're sleeping, they have to. I guess so. Right, because so, like, it's really only about the sleeping that you need to worry about where the people are. Okay, so round bed, 100 people, whatever it is. Uh, head in the middle or head on the end? Head's on the end, on the outside. Feet in the middle. Yeah. Head hanging off. Well, but like, I guess it depends on how, with the, uh, that, the it's circumference. Your, it's your design, yeah. Yeah. So for me, it would be... Well, is your foot feet bigger than your head or is your head bigger than your foot? Well, I would want everybody's feet to come into the center so that we had more space for the upper body, you know, because I'm a side sleeper, I gotta yeah. turn over. And I don't want shit touching my feet when I'm asleep, I don't know why. Oh, I don't like, really freak out. That. I, like, hang my feet off the bed and, and like... Oh, we could do, like, sardine style, where it's, like, one... Every feet, other. Head, head, feet. Every feet, other. Head. That's, yeah. I just figured out that's the best way to fold my clothes. Because <laughs> then there's no clumps. Because if you do one, then there's always clumps. Yeah, for sure. Because the fold. Yep. Is reverse it, yeah. But with sardine the, with style. style. I didn't know that's how they got sardines in there. I would have just said 69. Yeah, I would have just said 69. I guess 69. Sardine style. That's so fun. I grew up eating sardines. Did you? I love sardines. So sardines or anchovies? Sardines. What would you put sardines on that you shouldn't? Nothing. I eat them out of the can. Okay. Uh, in straight. in water or on oil? Either. Okay. Oil. Your preference. I feel like oil is a little bit tastier, but also, you know, more calories. And... So you're thinking, you're overthinking because you're like, it's oil. I should just yeah. get water. You don't even need the oil. You don't, because they're salty on there. Like, the oil is really just a vehicle to get all the little fleshy pieces of the sardine onto whatever you're eating, a cracker or bread or whatever. But I want to go back to the bed thing, because I really <laughs> I really feel like really the round that. bed yeah. needs a square base. So, That's what I'm saying. And, like, a, a square base that has some padding on it so that you can, like, kneel on it and then the elbows on the bed. It's funny that you say this. This is like a... So I, I, I'm I anti-bed frame across mm -hmm. the board. Okay. The, and I'm not... This is not a... So you like two mattresses on the floor? This is not a floor. boast. It's, and it looks bad. But this is not a boast. But but the amount of broken bed frames yeah. I've been a part of <laughs> is, is... Maybe too many Ikea bed frames. Astronomical. No! Um, I, I, I don't want to have... I don't want to make this about me. But, <laughs> but I'm anti-bed frame for a lot of reasons. And it's because 
There are injuries that can happen. You're yes. saying, so you're saying padded the thing in the, in the square with the round yep. Yep. because you have to fit in the negative space mm -hmm. and to be able to be places that you're not supposed to be because sometimes there's just stuff right. like and, the, and there's corners where there shouldn't be yep. and you just end up with injuries. Sex injuries is like a real thing. I totally believe that. And so... Sex sent me to the ER. Have you not seen that show? I, I don't watch it. Because um, you don't want to potentially maybe do that later. Well, they, I think I almost... Because I wouldn't go to the ER. I think I... So I don't even believe... I would like... I would just... I would just... Put but when it gets it. to the point where yeah. you have to go to the ER, that is where the show honest, comes in. I'll be honest. The only time I went to the pandemic... I only went to... The only time I went to the ER during the pandemic was because my balls were numb and I was like, we have to go right now. Like, there was, like, <laughs> there was no question. This is not normal. This is not like I can this wait This is not a drill. We go right now. My balls don't feel like they're what supposed happened? to feel. They never got an answer. They really not, never did got they, an answer. Did they unnum? I'm like staring right so now. So I started stretching more. So I was very inactive during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so I started stretching more. And so whatever stuff was like, because stuff was getting um, like, like uh, what's it called? Um, uh, not stressed, but like, uh, um, I wasn't as flexible. Everything yeah. was getting like tight. Yeah, yeah. And so my back and all the things and just all the stuff that was already wrong same. was getting worse. For sure, same. Uh, and then I have a, and then I have a hernia that I knew I had from mm -hmm. I don't even like five this I'm like really I'm in like a really like anti medical space Tell right me. now. I had a hernia for like a couple of years and I was like, it like hurts here mm -hmm. when I go to the bathroom, it feels like something's trying to punch through. And they're like, You're wrong, blah blah blah. And then they like and then they just did like one little thing. They did like ultrasound and they're like, You're fine. And then I was like, I'm not fine. And they're like, just they're like it's gas. I mean it's not gas. And so five years. And then so finally, because of something else, I got all these other tests. And they're so like, did you know you had this hernia? <laughs> hernia. You had this hernia. They got, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> and trying to tell the last guy. <laughs> right. So now you know it's a hernia. Check the medical records. And then what's crazy is they go, but you don't need to fix it. It's actually worse if you fix it. Because yeah. you don't really want mesh in your body. Yeah, so I it's have a little like, hernia too. Yeah. And they're like, if it doesn't hurt, don't worry about it. And it, hurt, it, hurt, it doesn't hurt enough, I guess. It's like, how much? So I got a hernia here. And then because of this... I don't know. I, I want. I want to. I want to. I don't know if there's guys that need to hear this. One of my testicles was trying to go back up, for like for like eight months during the pandemic. It would just go back it up. Was like I am done with this. We are. Done. It would just, yeah. It would like go back up because like I got. I think because I think the the hole because the hole opened back up. So my oh, ball was yeah. trying to go back up. So I'd be like, and I was like, and I, I was I was I was partnered, and I was like, hang on. I was partnered. I'm like about to come, but my balls. Up so there. I gotta push I it have back to, down. I have to relax and let it fall back down, and then hold so it so I can bust. Yeah, it's it weird. not easy being a man. But it, but it, but it, it speaks to like having, um, believe in yourself and believing in yeah. your body and things that you, you know, know your body. body. You and know then, your body. And, and those things are true. It's like my ball is going. That's so away. shitty that they didn't let, like hear you. Um, the doctors. Well, during the pandemic, also was a weird time for. Mm. But no, they were doctors like, you know what? You're fine. You don't doctors, have COVID. Get out of here. Doctors don't hear anybody. They really, really don't. They just, and it's not partially. It's not their fault. The community is designed for you not to really get the help you're supposed to get. But again, pessimistic comedian. Yeah. Um, they, nothing. Nothing has a solution. Um, yeah. It's okay. You're in therapy. Are we still in the lightning there. round? Yeah, we can still be playing, but you want to go back to beds. Well, I'm done with that. So now. perfect bed round. So per so would you ever you would get a king round bed, and then what would that be? I don't think that they come in king or queen on the round bed. I think it's just, just round. It's just like and then you just pick, you a just circle pick the circle size. Yeah, you just pick just the circle. Is it the circumference or the or the, or radius? the diameter? Yeah. Huh. Um, Boom, look at us. We're I so think smart. it's diameter, I guess, the length across. For sure. Circumference is all the way around, and the radius is half. Yeah, but radius, same thing. You just, yeah. Radius is double the diameter. Pick the radius. Half the diameter. Yeah, right. Anyway. Kind of like the inseam. The inseam starts from my balls. It's like, why is it not the whole leg? Because you don't need it. He's raised the same, the, if you, the same amount of information. Down. Yeah, same amount of information. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? So what else in the lightning round? Um, now I lost track. So do you, wait, you, uh, um, okay, so uh, let's see. Vegas or Florida? Vegas. Vegas or L.A.? L.A. Okay. Uh, That's controversial. Vegas or Indiana. Everything's controversial. Fucking Vegas. Indiana. Okay. Bleh. All right. No, thank you. Um, best. Okay, hot dogs or hamburgers? Hot dogs. Okay, really? Not sexual, but hot dogs. Yeah. Really? Hamburgers, I feel like I can never finish a hamburger. Really? Yeah. And I then. these problems. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a well, little, I'm little lady. I'm happy to have this conversation. I'm a little lady. I'm a tiny little lady. I'm a tiny little lady. <laughs> And I just so love mustard you want and ketchup. It's a regular hot dog, mustard, ketchup, not the foot long. We're just doing. I mean, it can be a foot long if yeah. I'm extra hungry. Yeah. I don't like relish. But once you get to foot long territory, you may as well have a hamburger. But it's much easier to eat. It's much cleaner. I'm not, it's not like slapping me in the face. Interesting. It's going straight down. I feel like I can't get a hot dog without making a mess. If 
If I go hot dog, I'm, I'm getting... What are you putting on it? Whatever is on it is going on my pants. Whatever it is. Like, if you're getting, like, a chili cheese dog, bite I pressure, understand. Because you're dealing with bite pressure on two, like, completely different sur surfaces. You have to give enough bite pressure to get through the, the, the bun mm -hmm. and break the thing, but not mangle all of it. Okay, so the thing is, you got to eat a hot dog with two hands. Okay. You, you hold the back end, and yeah. you squeeze that so yeah. that it doesn't slide through when you bite it. And then you squeeze the front end as you bite so that you're pushing the bread in inwards. You're putting pressure on the... And on the on the dog. Yeah. Okay. So nothing sliding out of your hands. So just you're an all American girl. Yeah. Just uh, cheese on the hot dog. Sure, but only nacho cheese. Nacho no cheese. No shredded cheese. I fucking hate shredded cheese on nachos and shit. Like you if it's a, if you're gonna call it nachos in the menu, you like it that whoopy have... up goopy cheese. Yeah, the goopy that, like that you like pump. Yeah, the only way you like your cheese is if you can squirt it out of uh, like a, like a toothpaste thing. For hot for really? topping cheese, yes. Okay. I'm not into like the shredded cheese and then melted. No, fuck that shit. Where do you put shredded cheese? On a taco. In your life. On a taco. On a salad. Shredded cheese on a salad. Yeah. Okay. It belongs nowhere else. All right. Fine. Mary, In my mouth, just straight from the from the So if you bag. Like, yeah. So what? So then have you had a have you had the Philly uh, cheesesteak? That's like that's that cheese. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Philly cheese. Really? I've had it, but I'm, it's not really my. You like hot dogs. You like nacho cheese. This seems like this should be your sandwich. You have to give it another chance. Maybe. People are yelling right now at the screen. Oh, I'm so sorry. funny. We don't want Polly for it. And then we're like, Todd, they're like, fuck! Um, <laughs> the, the littlest things upset the most people. Um, okay, what's the best What's the best uh, country that makes cars? It makes cigars? Cars. Cars. Automobiles. Uh, Germany. Germany. Okay. That says a line that I know who you are. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Okay. Uh, best. Well, these aren't, these aren't one of the others now. So I'm still stuck on hot dogs. It's so funny. Okay, so um, what's your go-to if you go somewhere you've never been before? What's your go? What restaurant are you trying to find? What, uh, what chain? What, like kind of? Well, maybe sure. Oh, you um, go to a chain. Yeah, I mean chains are tried and true. Like Outback is probably my yeah. favorite chain. I love the salmon. I don't, so I don't know what it is. The salmon with broccoli and lemon. It's just my thing. Really? It's an easy meal. I know it's relatively healthy anywhere you get it. And so salmon healthy. skin or no skin? Skin. Okay. So crispy. You're you're, it's got to be crispy, though, if it's just, I like, soggy. I can't eat salmon at a restaurant anymore because I'm so good at making it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's not consistent. Yeah, anyways. you're right. Frustrates me. Um, okay, wait, so is there seafood that you won't do? I'm not a big fan of lobster, but, like, I'll eat it if it's part of something. But I'm not going to, like, order lobster, Yeah, though. it's an insect. It's really the only thing I'm kind of, like, man on. Yeah. Okay. You'll eat an octopus. Mm -hmm. You'll eat a calamari. Mm -hmm. What's, what, what seafood won't you eat raw? Uh, really anything. Like, I'm not much of a sushi? tuna, and I don't love sushi. Really? When Not raw stuff. Like, I'll eat, like... Salmon, like the for me, is just as good. Raw, no skin. Really? As it is skin cooked. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different kind of salmon, though, so don't just, like, get the grocery store salmon and eat it raw. That's not the same. There's, like, sushi-grade salmon. Yeah, that's true. That might be true. I think salmon... Yeah, for you people at home, don't eat just random Don't, just take salmon. a bite. Don't catch a fish in the ocean and then take a bite out of it. That actually probably would be fine. I don't know. I don't know. What's the thing? What's the thing that you think you know more about than most people besides what we're grammar? Talking about? Grammar. Okay, sure, <laughs> sure. Now, have you done all the things we talked about when we first met? You wanted to do. You wanted to do grammar Nazi porn. Grammar Nazi. I'm making it aggressive. The grammar. Uh, I think you're friendly. Right. I think you're right. What? Oh, baby Lexi. <laughs> that's the first thing. That's one of the first things we talked about. Which is why the next time we did an episode, I did like a spelling bee with you. Yeah. What um. Have you done that? I knew you were talking about it. No. Have you done that? You haven't done it yet. No. No, I've kind of calmed down on the grammar thing because I, um, language evolves and people, as long as you can understand what people are communicating, yeah. you're good, but I do it's silently well, correct people, it's so well it's just not really like, I'm not like in your face about it anymore, yes. but I did have a fan who bought me a hat that says Y-O-U apostrophe R-E and it has an asterisk next to it because it's, it's like constantly correcting your. It's great. I like that. Yeah, I get, I think I do, I do this thing where if, um, especially if it's like, if it's somebody who needs to be educated it, to a certain extent, if they start, uh, bad grammaring me, I like immediately dismiss yeah, them like as, a, as a, thing. Yeah, it's like, it's like, I'm sorry, you're looking at my uh, x-ray right now and you just said this thing. Yeah, like, right, 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 right. So you made should... up a word the other day. I was on, I was on the phone with a, with like a new therapist and they made up a word and I was like, I like called back at the first, I need, I called the switchboard and I was like, I need another person. This is not a word. They made up a word. You can't make up a word. <laughs> Well, you make up words all the time. Just because they're not official words doesn't mean they're not communicating what you want to hear. That might be true. But 
He's got, he's just, you got another word. The thing I've been noticing more lately is that people don't know how to use I versus me. Okay. People say I for everything. Like myself. Like, I, me, myself are those, like the tricky ones, right? Yeah, people will say, um... Teach us. Like... Right, you can't. Uh, teach like, us. I'm trying to think of, like, a concrete have you done, have you done teach? Have you done teach your MILF, though? Oh, yeah. yeah. And then the concept of MILF is, so you said it's a power dynamic where you're in power for most of the most Yes. Time. And so you get to... Teaching the boy or tell, or helping him achieve... Or helping me achieve a fantasy through him... Right. ...is more what it is. It's not really about him. Right. As is most porn. Right. Not about the male. So have, do you believe in this, um, like, porn for women? This idea that there's, like, different porn for women. Would you make Absolutely. stuff that's just for women? I would, but I don't think I would know how to make it my own. Like, I would need some guidance. Because yeah. for me, the thing that's hot is the woman in charge. Yeah. And I don't know if that's hot for me if it's a woman on woman in charge. Sure. Sure. Yeah, and then like, and then important for women is, is some of it just just the guy just taking. Because there are people that just don't want to have to make a decision. Like that's like a big thing. Yeah, for like, sure. Like, can I just Submissive. not have to fucking decide tonight? Yeah, and that's fun. But yeah. it, it, some people live that as a lifestyle, and some people live that as sure. a kink, as like a little sure. sprinkle into the. Play. And then and then some do both because mm -hmm. they're in this power, so they want this power later. Right. Um, so to camera, how do I use my me? I or myself. Okay, so uh, the the way that you know is by taking out the subject. So if you take out like Charles and I or Charles and me are going, you take out Charles. So it's me are going or or like me is going or I am going. So when is me? When it sounds right. So Charles and I are going to the store. Or Charles and me are going to the store. I am going to the store. Or me am going to the store. Which one sounds right? I yeah, am going to the store. So yeah. it's Charles and I. So then when do you but, use me? So me is the same, same deal. Um, Lacey, uh, I'm going to the store. Uh, let me think. Mm. Who was the... How many people were... Mom is giving a treat to Lacey and I. Mom is giving a treat to Lacey and me. So you take uh -huh. out the subject. Mom is giving a treat to I. Mom is giving a treat to me. So it's mom is giving a treat to Lacey and me. Who's, who's Lacey? This sounds great. Yeah, I, was, <laughs> I, like, I want Lacey's who's treat. Lacey? Um, wait, do you have animals? I don't. I'm too busy to give a fair people, amount of attention. People feel that way. I love to love on all the animals I see in the world. Like I will roll my window down and hang out with dogs at the, yeah. at the red light. I'm like, I love your dog. That's, so this isn't an LA way to, to view it. Because I was like, why are you still? I was like, why are you still in the car? No, because I have a thing now where if I see a puppy. Oh yeah, because you don't drive here. <laughs> yeah. So if I see a puppy, I've been, I've been like, I'll be, if I see a puppy and I'm walking down the street, something like, I'm sorry, I can't hear what you're saying because there's a puppy. Exactly. Right I can't do anything else if there's a puppy. I was like, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to meet this puppy in two blocks. And yeah. Like, what are you? Uh, where even is the puppy? And then I'll get low and I have to. Meet yeah, the puppy. I love them. They're so sweet and I just love animals of all kinds, but. I also want to love one and like give it all my attention and all my love and yeah. I just I don't have that to give right now. And right. maybe in the future I will and maybe I'll adopt a dog that's you know later in life. I like that this to... is still lining up with the poly thing. And that was the analogy and that's what it is and that it works on the head. <laughs> um, okay, wait, so mountains, mountains or uh, or beach. Mountains. Um, a city or a country. City. Doesn't even, you don't have to say yeah. anything else. It's you wouldn't live in the country. Never. Too fucking quiet. It's too quiet. There's not enough grocery oh, stores around. Yeah. I need to have my creature comforts within 15 minutes. Oh, back to Um. What else? Um, high floor or low floor? High floor. Um. What? What else? What else do I want to give you? Cold or hot? Depends. If it is food, hot. You're on, as a, you're a person. And, oh, if I, I need to be warm. You need to be warm. Mm -hmm. You're cold easily. I can visit the cold, but I cannot live in the cold or be, like, in the cold for an undefined amount of time because my body, like, stresses out. It's so like, when are we going to be warm? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, a, like, if, if I'm living if in an you area that's cold. know that we're going, that you're going someplace cold for seven days. For seven days, I can it. prep for that. But, but, if, but if the trip gets extended because the snowstorm came in, I'm like, oh, no. I only brought What's seven days happen? of warm clothes. Yeah. Wait, so how many bags does it take you to travel? Uh, it depends on the length. If I'm That's going... That's what I mean. So, so is there a day to mm -hmm. outfits? A week or less. Um, I can get a, get away with one checked bag. Yeah. No carry-on. One week. One week. How long are you here? 
Um, so I'm in a couple different places, so it's a total of 14 days. How many bags? Uh, four. Four bags. One bag half empty so that I can buy, I can shop and bring things home. Okay. You know, ahead. Did I ever tell you my favorite, like, the thing that I want, like, the only thing I want out of affluence? Did I ever tell you this? All I want is to travel with nothing. Ah, uh, that's I wanna, so uh, I want to show up, have, like, and then with Amazon, it's like, I can show up, have a package at the hotel with the clothes that I want to wear for mm -hmm. the thing, and then... When I'm done, either just, I would like to be, and if it's real, I could just sell everything. I could sell my panties <laughs> and, like, make money on the way home. Or just throw them out because it's fine because I don't have money to consume it. Or, That's very wasteful. Maybe. Fine. I'll Not walk, maybe. Fine. It is. Fine. I'll give my shoes to a homeless guy. Yes, that and, is yeah, so fine. much better than fine. just... I'll just throw away these fine. underwear. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think times. I mean. Yeah, I don't think I mean throw away, throw away. But yeah. I want to be able. To, I want to be tra I want to be able to travel empty. That's yeah. what I want to be able to. Do. That's pretty cool. I really want that. I feel like that's much more attainable in the U.S. than it is in outside of the country. Why? Well, because you never know what you might need outside the country. And you have this fear. I do. I travel so light, so much that it really doesn't matter. And then I figured out that like uh, return policies are so good. Like, so I went to Avian not knowing if I could get to like, if I could go to the show. Yeah. And then I got and then so I just bought my outfit. And then I fucking returned it. That's yeah, what I did. That's the beauty of it. Um, and that's not the same in other countries. Maybe. I don't have the fear. I don't have that fear. I'm like, I'll figure. I'll go to South. I'll figure it out. You'll figure it I'll out. Figure out how to wear that's pants. such a man approach. I know, but it actually, girls are like, oh my gosh, what if they don't have my foundation shade? Yeah. What if yeah. they don't have my eyelashes? Yeah. Okay, fine. It's much. It's easier to be a man sometimes. Sometimes. Unless you have a hernia, and no one wants to tell you that you have one. And then your balls gonna. That's the thing. So, like, by the way, ultrasound is not is not good for anything. So they ultrasound my balls. It's good for finding babies. F right. So they they ultrasound and they didn't find the hernia, and then they ultrasound my balls, and they're like, "Your balls are fine." I was like, "They're not fine. They're they're numb." And they like sent me home. And I was like, "This." Maybe is that's when the hernia started. No, the hernia was. Um, oh, uh, prior to the ultrasound. Yeah. Okay. And I think they're and I do think that they're related. But what do I know? Doctors, please chime in. I don't know. I like it when the, the no you, doctors are watching this. I hope maybe. No. You don't think doctors are porn friendly? I think they're porn. Well, it depends. It depends. Yeah. But I think they're they're porn friendly. But like, this is not the what they're watching in their free time. Is there a target market that you think porn misses? I think there is a target market that porn overemphasizes, and that is the eighteen to twenty four year old category. Yeah. But dudes with hard ons who don't know how to be gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> That's me talking. <laughs> You're like, That's, That's me category. It's me. It's me. That's me category. No, not that's not who I am. <laughs> That's just been my experience. That's a very interesting question, Dan Frigolette. Uh, I think that there are many categories these days, so there will be a cat there will be many that will get missed because well, we're so, just not creating content for everybody. So, on because on, I'm creating content for the 18 24 year olds because those are my fans. Yeah. For the most part, like right. every now and then, I'll get some people who in you know, different age ranges. So we can say for sure, we can say like definitively, like uh, on 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 the face of it, we're not making content for uh, ultra religious people of any religion, right? Right. Even though some of those people are still in the Even race though, bed. right, and some some religious people are also into milk porn, so you sure. know, they fit into multiple categories, right. and they may not see that their ultra religion portion of themselves is like, something that they want to have in the porn world. Interesting. That's interesting. Also, also because because of because anything that's ultra anything, there's little loopholes, mm -hmm. right? So it's like as long as they're married, mm -hmm. I can watch right. them. Right? Like it's like this right. little as loophole long as the drink is watered down, I'm still a Mormon. <laughs> right. Whatever. Have you heard of the? Oh, I have to. I Please. have to tell. It's too um, much. No, I've, okay. I've heard of the this term called soaking in the Mormon religion, what does that mean? where they insert the penis into the vagina, but they don't move. So if, as long as you're not thrusting, it's not sex. So they're still virgins. Don't do that. And then they have friends come and move the bed, and then they're they're fucked. No, fuck. yes. That's not really what happens. No, I promise you. I read an article about so this. So they're so it's a loophole. It's a loophole. They're not fucking. Mm -hmm. Their friends are fucking them, which just sounds way more intense than what it is. But it's they're way shaking more, the bed that's worse. so that they're fu they're moving, but the, the two people are. It's justification. It's yes. like it's like the it's like being uh, it's like being ultra Christian and giving up your butt but won't give up your vagina. Yes. I like I do like those little things. I like those weird little loopholes. Mm -hmm. It's like you'd rather have eleven people in the room while you not fuck your wife. Girlfriend, because so they're girlfriend. not married. If they were married, that's it would why. be fine. That's why. So you can put it in. But you can't move it. Can't move it. Because what's the loophole they're they're good doing? Why can you put it in? Uh, because it's not sex. No, it's, it's not sex. It's sex. not sex. Penetration itself isn't sex. Penetration, I guess, isn't sex, but the, it's the movement in and out and the orgasm, I guess. Yes. I don't know. Here's a good question. How do you know you're having sex? If penetration isn't sex, 
And it isn't, and, right? And it's like mouth sex is sex or isn't sex. Yeah, yeah. How do you know you're having sex? <laughs> and then and then so many people can have sex without really having sex. Because I've been dry humped, and that's and someone got off. Mm -hmm. That so that's sex. So how do you know you're having sex? That's very interesting. Let's define it. I don't know if I can. I know that's the that's the that's the loop. Because it, you would think it would be penetration. Yeah. Or yeah. Like touching of the genitals. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, this is hard. It is. It's very hard to define sex. I know. I know. I like, do you play that card? Okay. Do you get to play that card? You're like, hi, what do I know? What do I know? I'm just so important. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really feel like I can play that card because the point where I might play that card, I've already shown too much right. of myself. Right. So they're like, you're full of shit. It is interesting. It's like, so like the thing that you have now with, with your entire career is a thing like a comedian has or a performer has mm -hmm. from when they're going to see it. So again, you cannot show a different thing. And as long as you're consistent, like, I had to tell comedians at certain points in time where, like, they were like, oh, but I, like, I have all these, these jokes about being married, um, so, like, I'm going to be dishonest to the crowd. And, and tell I, them like, I'm married. No, I mean, you tell your married jokes at the beginning, and then you tell your I'm getting divorced jokes in the middle, and then you tell your I'm single stuff after, and then it makes sense to us. Mm -hmm. And then we know your whole journey, and then you are. You're honest as part of it. Because if you try to make move it around that you're married, your girlfriend, whatever, that mm -hmm. seems inconsistent. Then they're like, wait, wasn't he married? Why yeah. is he talking about and girlfriend? So your perspective just needs to stay yeah, consistent. Yeah, you gotta tell the story around. of your life. And so yeah, so if you you can't be dumb at the beginning of the show and then mm -hmm. be smart at the end, right? It's what you're speaking to. And honestly, I don't think that I like. I always use it as just comic relief when I yeah. do that kind of thing. So it's not like yeah, being sarcastic or facetious yeah. about it is also fun. For sure. All right. Look at how big your shoes are. Thank Look you. Look at my tiny little girl foot Thank here. You. Yeah. Look at this. Boom. Like, you would not think that that... Look at that. My foot, and my foot's weird, too. So, like, the, all these masculinity issues are fun. And it's, uh, it's interesting because I'm finally I'm speaking to um, people on the boy-boy side. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying it to be, to be to not offend anyone. Mm -hmm. Boy-boy side. And so, like, there's people on the boy-boy side who, like, had to fight against masculinity who have all of the things that you think people who, like, we think are masculine should have, but because they were, um, like, marginalized or were, you know, like, uh, closeted, mm -hmm. they didn't ever feel that thing. So masculinity is such a weird, funny mm -hmm. thing. This thing where guys are like, oh, I'm six foot. I want these two guys fight over being six foot. Neither of them was. My first day of college. And I was like, I'm never going to tell them I'm six foot whether I am or not. This is not worth it. It's awful. Yeah, and, like, I don't want to be in that. We're going to stand back to back. It's like, I don't want to be that. Oh, so geez. my foot is, so my, so my feet are all, t uh, they're, the, the tendons on the top are so tight that when, that when I'm not, there's no pressure on my foot. It's smaller. So when I step down, it spreads oh, out like a foot. I see that. And so people be like, your foot, that's not the size of your foot. And it's like, cool, whatever, whatever size you want my foot to be able to do that. But there's so many things that we fight about yeah. uh, and to try to tell other people what their thing is. Because we're all just trying to fit in. So when I tell you that my shoe size is 12, believe me. Now I want to look at the shoe size. And get a puppy. So that's a um, And get a puppy. Don't get a puppy. Get a puppy. No, you should get an older dog and be like the hospice oh, for that do dog. Oh, now oh, we're doing a Bob let me Barker tell thing. You how, let me tell you how I'm hospice for flowers. Hospice for flowers. Um, People do this. People go to Home Depot and they go to the, they go to the, the rehab section. And they buy the $5 flowers. Are you that person? I'm not that person. Okay, okay, so I started in the pandemic, as everyone did, loving plants and being like more into I'm on original after. now that I have a Monstera plant. It's because of the pandemic? No, it totally is. Okay. Totally. Well, I for me it was because I didn't have anything to do. I was yeah. in California at the time. Beautiful yeah, weather. Like yeah. I had time to garden. I yeah. had a little balcony. Let's do this. Yeah. So I went to the gardening store and I bought a bunch of stuff and it all fucking died. Yeah. I mean, but the thing that I also learned during the pandemic is that I'm very good at arranging flowers, like cut oh. flowers, like that you get at the grocery store. Yeah. So I'd get a couple bouquets and I would take it all apart. I'd clean them all up, I'd get all the, like, I'd trim down their leaves. And yeah, no, no, you, like, get daisies, you gotta the pull whole, the leaves off. Yeah, you gotta or the, do or the leaves just die in the in water. In the water, and yeah. it molds. And then the, and then the, right, and then the flowers die faster. Yeah, so I would arrange them really pretty, I'd cut them really short, and, like, make them, like, really short into the, into the stem of the vase. Short. Yes. Yeah, that's the other thing, I see people, they, they don't cut their flowers, just stick it out, they're like, what are you doing? Yeah, and, you know, that, that is also a technique, because then, as, the, the days go on, you can trim them down go, more go, 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 and make go, go, go. them a little bit lower. Question. Mm -hmm. I know how to keep daisies alive. Gerber daisies is what I buy for a woman because those things stick around for like 20 days if you for cut sure. them right and put them in. What 
I hate roses because they last like eight minutes. Yes, you're how absolutely do I keep, right. How do I keep a rose alive? Um, it's really tricky. So what I bought was this stuff. It's called Crystal Bloom, and I get it on Amazon, and it's just like a liquid that you put in with the, with the water. It's better than the powder, in my yeah. opinion, that they give you with the flowers. Sure. And you, but the the trick is really you got to change the water often. Okay. And you got to keep trimming them down. So you'll notice as they've been sitting in the water, the bottom like two inches of the it's flower, pushing. it gets like brownish. Yeah. You got to keep trimming that off, and that's why you start them longer, and then you trim them down, and then you can. So like, you just keep them putting them in different vases. You can put them in the same vase. You just got to dump out the water, trim down the rose, put new water in, new uh, water. But, but pretty food. much across the board, rose fuck roses. Yeah, fuck roses. Yeah. Yeah. Carnations are great. They last a long time. Daisies are pretty. Um, some lilies are great. And then there are some plants that are some flowers that have a lot of pollen in them. Yeah. So I cut out the pollinators because... You do? They, yeah, I do. So like the, um, the like what are they? Are they lilies? I think they're lilies that, and they, that have like a little, little brown thing. pieces. Yeah. And it falls off. So you cut that off. I cut that and off. it's fine. Because, it's, yeah, it's fine. I mean, you've already cut the flower from the stem, so it's already dying. Yeah. And that's why I say I'm hospice for flowers because they all flowers come to my house to die. But I give them a great life until they do, and they look pretty, and they're arranged, yeah. and they're with their friends. Yeah, they're with their friends. How funny. Okay, so fa so go-to flower at the at the store. Um, whatever the cheapest bouquet is, to really? be honest, I get a couple of them because there are some throwaway flowers in there, and then you could just rearrange a couple different ones. And then I use little mason jars too, so I put like two or three flowers in there, no shit. and like different heights and vary it, vary it a little bit. Well, I want photos. I want flower photos. Um, I got one for you. That's uh, that could be your TikTok. I, you know, I thought about it, but then I'm like, do I really want this 80-year-old hobby? You think, it's, you think it's for old people? I think it's for elderly women who are I think are it's because like, you're looking at it like they're going to die, but I think people want to arrange flowers. I don't think... Because yeah. who's... Honestly, who's bringing old ladies flowers? Young men. <laughs> okay. Right? Like they're, like they're grand people? Grand people. Yeah. Or, you know, like we think about like in a nursing home. The amount of, the amount of alive old women I've brought flowers to is minimal. The amount of um, <laughs> a lot. the amount of uh, people that I brought flowers to that were closer to my age is a lot. Yeah, but they don't appreciate it the same way as I think the elderly ladies would. Maybe. You know. Maybe. They're like, oh fuck these flowers. Of course he got me flowers. So cliche. He has to. I won't flowers. do apology flowers. I give. I give. You did not expect I was going to give you flowers. I like. Flowers. I like that. Yeah, it's really important to me. Yeah. And um, I, also, the flower. By the way, by the way give give men flowers. I want flowers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, nobody's giving me flowers. I want flowers way more often than I'm getting okay. flowers. Yeah. I'll teach you how to arrange them and you can have like... So it's like a thing. I, I'm, I'm with you. It's like a thing. Like, I was, like if I was ever going to figure it out, I was going to buy my mom like a um, like a flower shop. I think it would be fun for her to do. Fun. Yeah. And uh, and then if it's like she can afford it, fine, we'll just hire people. But like, it's fun. It's fucking fun. Yeah. And now that in Florida, everything grows in Florida. When I was down there, I would be like, what the hell is that? You put a plant outside and then it's like a whole thing. It's because it rains a lot and the phosphorus and the rain really everything helps the flowers grow. in Florida. There's things in Florida. Florida has things that shouldn't even be plants. Florida doesn't want humans to be there. It wants plants. Because everything in Florida, like there's saw grass. Yeah. There's grass that will cut you open. Everything in Florida is either like poisonous or has like prickers <laughs> on it. It doesn't yeah. want you to be there. It's not for you. There should be no people in Florida. I agree. All right? Let's leave. Cut it off. Saw it off like Bugs Bunny did. Yeah. What did he saw? What did Remember Bugs Bunny saw it off? Florida at the... Oh, did he? Remember? No! I'll have to show you. No, I'm very happy with that. I just remember he kept fucking up Albuquerque. Yeah. <laughs> so left well, at Albuquerque. Here's a question. Uh, were cartoons smarter when we were kids? No, we just didn't have any other experiences. Okay. You know, like we didn't... There were really only a couple cartoons. I like your perspective on everything. We're the opposite. I go, everything was better. <laughs> That's the age of it. And I'm like, everything we didn't have was, enough experience. Yeah. Everything was better, and it really was. I was I was ignorant and naive, and that's why the world was great. And now yeah. I know stuff. And that's what I'm saying. That alludes to my thing earlier. Yeah. The world changes because we age. Yeah, interesting. We just brought it back around. Interesting perspective. We've we've uh, we've like we've come full circle a couple times actually. No, I think it's time to be done. Let's go. Um, Replug all your stuff. Twitter, Lexi Luna XOXO. Instagram, Beyond Lexpectations. That's such a good one. And everything else at IWantLexi.com. What's your, what's your TikTok going to be? I think it's Lexi Luna or Lexi Luna XOXO. I, I don't know. I, I like the on expectations so yeah. much. Um, I will give credit to Johnny Goodluck who came up with that name for me. So thank you. That's such a good name. Um, I lost you, like five counts, so I had to get more creative yeah. than the real Lexi Luna. Right. Did you plug, would you plug OnlyFans? 
What's the best way for us to pay for your stuff? I want Lexi.com has a list of all the different ways you can contact me and OnlyFans, Loyal Fans, Sex Panther, or any platform that you want to communicate with me on. Perfect. And we have to look forward to this this DVD project. DVD project, my sex doll is out, LexiLunadoll.com. And then and then and my hope is really that people in the industry are watching and listening. And so if you have some advice that you need, um, will you can, Hit me can, up. You, can you give advice to a man who wants to put his body in the correct position? Or is it totally different? I mean, I probably could, yeah, because, you know, it, it's, it's really tricky, though, because I don't know how a penis works. You know, I can tell a girl because I kind of know how know. vaginas work. Somehow, they people still don't know how penises work. I think half of everybody doesn't know. I think women and men don't really know how penises work. Yeah. Especially. I do I do give advice to male talent, especially new male talent, when I'm working with them on set. Because that's really? honestly the easiest time, because... They're in, they're in it right then. Yeah. And it's like, oh, if you just move your hand here, like, they'll be able to they see, can see The camera head. can see more. Yeah. Great. Uh, all the things. This is going to... Uh, I didn't realize you were talking this long. I, I, I really enjoyed talking to you. An hour and 40 minutes. Oh, that's good. Yeah, this is going to be like three episodes. Um, so check her out. Uh, listen to this podcast. Uh, wherever you listen to it, we're on the other thing. Uh, we have some stuff today on a, on a comically small couch. On YouTube, um, look, and he's then sinking. Look, like you and, can no longer see my cleavage. And your fans are not your fans are not gonna be my fans, but I, I have an OnlyFans. Um, if you're interested in that what kind of it? thing, it's just Danny Frakes. Danny Frakes. Like, what do I have on there? No, like, well, but yeah, like, what's so it's OnlyFans.com slash Danny Frakes. How do you spell it? D A N N Y F R I G S. Okay, see, I would have thought it would be G G S Frakes. No, no, there's only one G in the freak a lot. Really? Yeah, two T's, two T's one G. Yeah. The um, and I have, and I, and I keep, and I don't know what to really put on there. So I'm just like putting more and more of me, and more just and more of masturbate, me. Masturbate. Boy girl, do silly boy, I'm doing boy girl stuff now. Great. Going, that's we're doing. We're doing again. Um, because I was putting comedy on there, and, and then nobody uh, wants that. Nobody wants that. No, they all want to see your dick. <laughs> I need. We need. A, we need a only laughs. Only laughs. Dot com. I'm gonna start. <laughs> uh, thanks for listening, guys. For watching. Uh, next week we'll have another Bye. episode. Every Sunday we drop one. Mm-hmm.